Now to that close race that kept many voters and the candidates up until the early hours this morning. Trump back challenger John Gibbs claiming a narrow victory over Congressman Peter Meyer, setting up a big race in November against Democrat Hillary Scolton. And News 8's Jacqueline Francis live tonight at the Kent County GOP headquarters where Gibbs will be attending a unity event tonight. Jacqueline. Brian and Sue, it was around 2 this morning when the, the John Gibbs campaign declared victory. Former President Donald Trump calling Gibbs to congratulate him. You'll see Gibbs in this video taking that phone call at his watch party in Wyoming. You'll remember that Gibbs's opponent, Peter Meyer, was one of a few Republicans who voted to impeach the former president. Gibbs calling it a betrayal to the party. Thank you, President. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We did get a call from President Trump, who was uh, uh, just wanted to congratulate me on the good work we did in the race. I thanked him uh, for his uh, his support throughout this process, and uh, he was very excited and uh, said, "Get back to work hard uh, real soon because it's uh, going to be tough going into November." I wish we we know that. Gibbs will face Democrat Hillary Scolton in the November general election. I talked with Scolton today, who has a message for Peter Meyer supporters as she hopes to win over the moderate Republicans unable to get on board with Gibbs. I hear from people every single day who tell me, you know, I, I'm never voting for a Republican again. I, I didn't leave the Republican Party. The Republican Party left me because, you know, they feel that it's gotten too extreme. And I think that, you know, the folks who who voted for, for Peter Meyer, uh, you know, were expressing that as well. You know, they weren't in line with the, the brand of extremism on the Republican side. Uh, and, and we want to offer for a home to them. So you do think that you could appeal to Meyer supporters, at least some? Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I, I know I've had uh, a number of them reach out to me already this morning uh, and ask how to get involved in the campaign. Back here at the Kent County GOP headquarters, we are expecting to talk with the Republican candidate, uh, John Gibbs, ahead of a unity event tonight. So we're hoping to bring that to you coming up at six. Back to you. All right, Jacqueline Francis, thank you. The third congressional race was watched nationally last night. Political reporter Rick Albin here. And what do you think this means now for West Michigan moving forward? Well, it's just been a short period of time, yeah. so we'll have to see. We know there's a big campaign coming up, but it means there is going to be an open seat. And what on paper looks to be a very competitive race in a newly drawn district that only last night got its first real test to see how voters will react. Gibbs is the handpicked replacement of Donald Trump for Peter Meyer, who voted to impeach the former president. He's new to West Michigan and new to elective politics, but showed last night that a Trump endorsement and a little help from the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee can, in this case, take out an incumbent. Now Democrat, Hil Democrat Hillary Scolton, who came within five points of Meyer two years ago, will go up against Gibbs. What could prove to be a costly and could get, be kind of a rough race. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we know that the former president was watching from Bedminster uh, last night. What does Donald Trump's presence in Michigan mean, not only for that race, but for the governor's race as well? Rick? We discussed this last night. It's still kind of hard to get your arms around it. He's a force, right? But I'm not sure what kind of force. And let me tell you what I mean by that. The endorsement of John Gibbs and his obvious need for revenge against Peter Meyer fueled this race. And now you see the outcome. Now, to that degree, he was successful, but the real test comes next. A Trump endorsement in a Republican primary is one thing, but how does that play out in the general election where, by necessity, you need to appeal to voters beyond your base, remembering that a lot of traditionally reliable Republican voters stayed home or voted for Joe Biden in 2020 here in Michigan, and with those voters, a Trump endorsement could be more of a liability uh, than it is a benefit in the general election. That's something we'll have to wait and see. Um, and not to get off track, but that that also would apply perhaps to Tudor Dixon to see how that plays out in the general. Yep. We'll see. All right. Rick, thank you.